look up and down the streets here. Uh, Gok Pole, uh, there's posters on every pole here for yes, 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 yes. The whole establishment, including all the political parties, with the exception of ANTO, are want yes. Uh, what I'm so worried about here is that the attack on our constitution is uh, perpetual and is continuous. Uh, you, when you see there was, uh, this uh, it was brought to the door, there was no pre-legislative scrutiny where we could have brought in uh, the officials from the Department of Finance, Department of, of, of the Revenue Commissioners could have come in and explained the ramifications of this, about the durable relations and all this carry on. We'd have that all explained. Where the members could ask the, 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 rock, the, the Revenue and indeed the Department of Finance officials about the implications of this durable relationship on families and on inheritance and on farmings and on business people and everything else. None of that. It came into the All Chamber then, two pieces of legislation. Uh, we had over 60 amendments to one. We got an hour to debate that. No amendment was reached. It was guillotined one hour's debate in the Dáil for each of the referendums. I think three hours in total in the Shannon. Is that democracy? Maybe would the government argue if they were if they were here? Might they argue that this is an amendment that uh, has been discussed for years and years now, and that they wanted to get it done in a quick manner in order to try and get it over the line because there, there's been a lot of, in their view, maybe stalling and that it's been kicked down the road many times. So so maybe if they were to make that argument, what, what would be your response? Baloney, there's many pieces of legislation languishing. There's many private, private members' bills that I and others have brought forward. There's many other things that the government have committed to in the poker for government that are not being uh, pushed. This was pushed and rushed. And what I want to know, and Senator McDougall and others have asked the questions, there were 16 meetings of an inter- interdepartmental group, and also uh, the, the NGO, a tour, were involved in some of those meetings as well. We want the minutes of those meetings. The, publish, the government won't publish those until after the vote. What are they hiding from the people? We'd like to see what these questions raised that I just mentioned about implications for, for, for inheritance and, and taxation and everything else. Also, um, the, the Minister Catherine Martin has directly and flatly contradicted the Supreme Court judge uh, who has been appointed as chair of the commission by this government. I asked the Times last Thursday, did he have faith in the judge or did he have faith in the chair of the commission or faith in Minister Martin? Can't have faith in both. The eminent justice has come out and said that the constitution does not state that women's place is entirely in the home. Minister Martin has refused to retract her words and continue to bullishly go ahead and say that she knows better than the uh, independent commission and the chair of that commission. So this is a, this is a, a subversion of democracy, really. No proper discourse or debate. So the government can't use that excuse. As I said, other pieces of legislation are languishing. Just uh, on the Minister Martin point, what she said when I was speaking to her about this was that the import and the implication of the constitution is that a woman's place is in the home. So she seemed to be saying that while it might not say that directly in those words, that is the the thing that you would infer if you were to read it, and that's how many people have interpreted it. What would you say in response to the minister's argument there? That's her opinion. It might be the opinion of many people, but her opinion here doesn't matter. It's, she's a minister in the cabinet and the executive. Uh, the Supreme Court judge and commission were appointed by the same government to oversee misinformation. She's deliberately, knowingly distributing misinformation, full stop, as far as I'm concerned, in our position as cabinet minister. So why do we have the commission if they're just going to give them the two fingers and say, oh, I know more than this, ju- this eminent justice? I've heard this uh, justice, I can't think of her name, just, but she's been on uh, the radio a few mornings answering questions, very fair, very unequivocally and very uh, solidly. So she's doing a good job, but the Minister Madden thinks she knows better. Most other le- the legislation at the moment going through the Dáil and Shannon, that committee at the moment, this, remember, didn't go to committee, any of these two pieces of legislation. Uh, they avoided that as well. They avoided pre-legislative scrutiny. The planning bill is before the, the, the committee at the moment. There's somewhere like, uh, I think, 11, 800 pages on this. There's numerous amendments. It's been there for te- two weeks now. It'll continue, I say, several more weeks. And properly have to be scrutinised properly. That's our job is Tocti Dali and Shannon Dory, messengers of the people. This is our duty. And to look at the ramifications and to have people in and, and explain to us the ramifications uh, legally, uh, financially, everything else of, of legislation. And this case with planning is about, you know, the impact on development, the impact on 
our communities. So this is much more serious. We're messing with the constitution here, and we should have had people in to explain the consequences. They didn't make a, a, play, a play that they're supporting. They were strive to support carers. They've done pressure little for carers uh, for the decades that they had to. And obviously, they were strive is useless. I spent many hours in many debates uh, in this house here uh, this, at different legislation arguing over the word shall or may. Governments love to put may into most legislation. The word is may do this, may do that, may whatever. But they will not put in the word shall because the word shall would mean that they, had, they were, they were uh, obliged to do it and would have to do it. So why didn't they put the word in shall, uh, shall look after the carers because carers have been literally abused and abandoned. The word strive. And I'm saddened to think that the Carers Association have fallen for this. But of course there is the implicit threat on all these NGO funded organisations that they won't get the funding by, from Roger Garman, implicit I said, will be turned off. So they, he who pays the piper calls the tune and that is a shocking situation because there's over six billion a year being paid to NGOs and we see the work here of a citizen assembly, unelected, appointed, uh, an NGO thrower in this case and uh, all other interdepartmental uh, agencies, all kept secret. Why the secrecy? We're going to be told after the referendum. That's too late when the people have voted. They can't get their vote back out of the ballot box. Uh, you mentioned uh, Minister Roger O'Gorman and he said just last Friday that the referendum, if it should pass and a yes vote is achieved, will uh, require and create a new obligation on the government to fund carers. That was his view and I believe Taoiseach Leo Varadkar has said something similar. Do you have a particular view on that? I almost always wear the carers badge. I'm an advocate for carers. No such thing. I mean, the, the, the carer we've been we've been we've been fighting budget submissions and the Department of Finance here uh, year after year budget submissions to get the carers recognised on a statutory basis. Have them, uh, you know, they, they, they not denied many cars and many other issues because they're getting a small carers allowance. I have some horrendous cases. People denied carers allowance, or where they have carers allowance, uh, being withdrawn or lose other uh, benefits because of that. So they're paying lip service to the carers and. Roger Kilgarman can say what he like. What's in the legislation is strive, that they will strive. So that word is like the same as we strive to have a fine day or we love to have fine weather or we strive to double and strive to beat Kerry in the next uh, round of the, of the championship. Strive is just a word like you and I, uh, Ian or Eihill, doesn't it has no legal uh, uh, standing. I believe Justice Marie Baker, who we were referring to earlier, she was saying uh, that it, it does mean to try quite hard. It's not just to say, ah, oh, sure, I'll give it a go, and that there is sort of an implication there that the state would make a real solid effort. Again, would, would you have a, a response to that? I would, and I accept Justice Baker, and I said to her counsel, uh, but the government are striving to sort the housing crisis within the last 15 years. And now we've reached a, 40, a new low, new uh, low of a high of fourteen thousand, uh, plus as well as as well as when the when the lads come along, or sorry, when the iPads people come. Now we're with, with Deputy Backchick saying today there's a thousand of them also sleeping on the streets. That's not acceptable. But of course we're striving to uh, fix the homeless crisis, but still we're allowing open borders and people flood in here through airports and ports without any checks whatsoever.